Hey everybody. So on this one, we're going to go into where is gold in Montana over here. And so looking at Montana, you can quickly see some of the patterns we've seen over the last weeks where we're talking about the different things that happen on different sides of major mountain ranges, in this case, the Rocky Mountains. But it's fascinating to look and see where gold is. And it's also just as fascinating and probably more valuable to see where gold is not. That's why, you know, the saying gold is where you find it is interesting, but really no gold is where you find it also. And so you want to know where there is no gold. That's a good idea. Now that you can find gold almost anywhere. I've had that asked several times to clarify. You can find flower gold in minute quantities almost anywhere on the face of planet Earth. That's just the nature of the beast when it gets that small. The problem is when it gets that small, it's really hard to collect enough of it to be of value unless something's playing in your favor. There are things like beach sands that can be pretty rich in flower gold, but it's usually not concentrated in places like the outer reaches of the plains or uh, anywhere where there's been a glacier moving through simply because it's just so thin and it's so spread out. We call it uh, dispersion. Okay. And so you don't want to, you don't want to get where there's too much gold dispersed too far because it just isn't rich enough to be worth going after. Unless you're just trying to have fun and learn to practice panning with an art for flower gold, because flower gold is hard to get into your pan and keep it there. Uh, but it is something that also, when you, when you do that, it can create a situation where you're really, you know, working hard to get the stuff out. And if you're that good, you'll be good elsewhere. So don't forget that. Um, uh, and from time to time, people find some pretty nice, uh, you know, plaster deposits of flower gold. I'm trying to re-energize Mr. Facebook here so that I can see from your comments. So tell me, is my audio coming through clear tonight? <laughs> or do I need another can of Murphy off? You know, another can that I can just, you know, dispense with the problems. Just spray it around and let them have it. <laughs> I got everything in here. Too much. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. Um, so let me see what I've got. There we go. We got live gold in Montana and there are 28 of you here tonight. Ah, awesome. So what we're going to do is dig in. Let's have at it. Uh, you're looking at the Montana picture here. Let's go over and take a peek at what we talked about over the last couple of days. I talked about this USGS map. So I'm going to peek over there for a second. And we can see right in here that picture I was talking about. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start coloring on it again, but I'm going to color in something that is more visible and a little thicker. So what we talked about with, with what was happening over in Utah, now we're in this area of Montana. So we're kind of going something like this uh, and then across. And then it's kind of major block and then goes up and follows it. Oh, come on. goes up to the Canadian border. We own this much. You guys can't have it. <laughs> So anyway, it's probably not that big, <laughs> but you get the idea. Uh, and so in that sense, we've talked about Horst and Graben over here. That's this section. And then now we're working in this Rocky Mountain range. And then the other half, it is this Great Plains stuff. So let me erase this board and I'll draw a little clearer picture just to clarify what's going on and make it cons more uh, congruent with the continental, whatever it is that goes on here. Uh, so something more like this, and I'm probably still botching it, but you get the idea. There isn't really any horse and Graben with Montana. It's, it's to the east side of all that stuff. So now we're moving out of the desert and we're moving into the Rocky Mountains or what is called the Cordilleras. Fancy word for something longer than what we used to refer to as the Rocky Mountains, which was basically this range in the United States and on up into Canada. But it continues on down all the way to the southern tip of South America. Go figure. And the reason is, it's that it's that one of the areas where the compression of the Pacific plate is most readily manifest. So it shows up clearly in this range of mountains. And as they buckle, they buckle all the way from north and south. So it's a, it's a divide that goes all the way down, divides the continent and divides that whole section all the way down to South America. It goes through the Andes and all that good stuff. So let's check in for a moment. Uh, just do a quick check on you guys to see how we're doing with comments. Uh, can you tell me, is my audio coming through okay? And, oh, Jess, Obi, Jess Kenobi, yes. <laughs> you, 
So uh, let's see, we've got gold. Would love to know the location of or locations in Oregon. We did Oregon earlier, so look it up. I, you can look up any of these videos on either YouTube or Facebook by simply looking up the phrase, find gold in and name the state. So find gold in Oregon should get you what you're looking for. Uh, it's also on the posts below. So if you just scroll forever, because we've done a lot of these, uh, you probably should be able to find it. And if you have trouble, let me know and I'll post a link. I don't mind doing that. I just, I'm busy right now. Okay. So uh, at this point, we'll continue on. Uh, and and uh, there is a California version of this. It's a little truncated, so I may kind of loop back and expand it a little bit more. I don't know. You guys tell me. One of the things I want to do here is I just want to touch on these subjects. Two things. One, I touch on them in more detail in the Gold Diggers Underground or Gold Prospectors Bonanza Club. You'll see the link uh, right here. I'll go back uh, over to one of these pages where the link shows. Link, show up. So sourdoughminer.com GDU. Uh, basically, if you look at that link right down there, that'll tell you where to go and look up the Gold Prospectors Bonanza Club. The trial's a dollar for 14 days. In there, there's a bunch of other stuff, including how to do various things with maps and how to read rocks and minerals and, and water flow uh, and a lot more. So uh, avail yourself of that. The other place to look at is the same thing, Sourdough Miner slash GGM for gold, government gold maps. And that's the process by which I make these maps because I do more than just pull the map up. I pull the map up, I explain what the map means. I also show you in detail kind of how to customize these things with different, uh, different kinds of icons. You can see a customized set right here. I changed them tonight just for change's sake. But that's the idea is you want to make them into whatever suits your or floats your boat um, and that's the idea uh, for now let's see uh, sound is good okay so we're good to go let's roll I'm gonna go back over to our Rocky Mountain picture and what we're gonna do is draw again this section so remember we're talking about kind of coming through here and coming down the Rockies and across here and this is really a terrible picture of Montana but that's the idea and so uh, it actually goes over to about here. And this yellow stuff, let me re-erase that. Okay. The yellow stuff here is one kind of thing. And if you'll notice in the maps, you'll see it lacks a lot of gold. But this, this slice that comes all the way from, you know, like I said, it divides the whole continent. And rips right through here and then shoots on down here and comes across well i'm not doing a good job down in south america but it literally goes on down and all the way to the tip of argentina and so what happens is this thing this this continental divide is where all these plates kind of put the maximum pressure to the center and things buckle upward and expose an awful lot of auriferous gravels and and ores and load and so, and also cause a lot of faulting, which injects more load through hydrothermal venting of, of volcanic processes. So the idea is what we're gonna do is focus on what's going on here and keep your eye on this Western portion right over here, because that's where most of the gold is. Um, and I'll explain that as we go along. So let's go back over to uh, PJ on the desktop and we'll kind of focus on what's going on here. So right now, as we go into this area, you can see this is the Rocky Mountains dividing this whole thing. Uh, I think I can draw a picture. Yep, there we go. So there's our Rocky Mountains kind of going right through the middle of this guy. And what we're looking at is out here, it's fairly plain, you know, as in farmland. Lots of it. Really good stuff. But lots of it. And so what happens is there's a lot of alluvium. We talked about that before, and it tends to bury anything that's not really associated with another protrusion or intrusion that's of, of, of volcanic, not volcanic, of igneous origin. Okay, fire formed rocks. So those typically are, are noted by the green texture on this map. And so a green or black, depending upon your color screen. So you can kind of see some of that right in here. There's some mountains that are poking up. Same thing around in here. And it really, right over in here too. So you notice there's a pattern. Wherever you see some buckling and some protrusion of rocky material, 
you stand a chance of finding gold. Or if there's something that drained into it, you stand a chance. But notice this, this orphan way out here. Um, you know, it pretty much pretty much uh, doesn't stand a chance. It's a place called Miles City. Uh, unknown occurrence, gold. And by the way, it's an interesting one because it has Placer AU, which stands for gold, and PGE. If you ever see PGE, look intently for those little gray nuggets that look a bit like lead, but not lead. They don't look like they've melted or like teardrops or like balls from a, from a shotgun. Instead, they look pockmarked like a little tiny gold nugget, but they're, but they're silvery. But they're not tarnished black, they're silvery, uh, maybe gray. And so uh, that's platinum group elements. And so typically it's not just platinum, it's platinum group because it'll have platinum, osmium, iridium, rhodium, you know, and so forth mixed in in different mixes. And the mixture will create a different tonality of it and a different, you know, kind of density, but they're all very heavy around, around specific gravity of 20 to 21 if they're pure. That's heavier than gold. And so when you pick up one of these things, it's noticeably different. And it's, you know, but they're typically not very big. If you see one that's big, it's typically alloyed or it's, or it's a ore of some sort that has a lot of other stuff in it. Very rare to get a nugget in platinum that's much bigger than a half of an inch, if even. They're just are really rare. And so they're really valuable. Big hint. Um, but that's, that's what this guy's producing right in here. Um, can't see the sheet because my face is covering it. Let me see if I can move over just for a minute. Ah, destroy crayons. So, uh, I can do this. So there's Miles City, the one we were just talking about. And right there is that placer gold with AUPGE. So gold and platinum elements. Really important to kind of keep your eyes out for that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's try another one of these guys uh, out in the middle here. Um, here's one. Seven Blackfoot Placers. Uh, just gold as a commodity number one. Uh, here's another one up in here that looks kind of interesting. Cow, Cow Creek Placers. So notice we're finding these things out in the middle of the sticks. Uh, they are there. It's not like you can't find them, but they are rather rare. So, uh, and compared to what's over in the Rockies itself. So let's zoom in a little bit and see why they might be there. Notice we, as we zoom in, and that's the beauty of doing this Google Earth thing, and part of what I show you in that, in that uh, GDU and Government Gold Maps product is that, you know, zooming in and angling it, you can actually angle this thing. I should show you sometime so you can actually fly in and see it, not only in a relief map style like this, you can actually twist it so you can fly down the canyons and see where on the canyon walls we're looking at, where the load mine was, and therefore downhill, downstream, is where the gold rolls. You know, that's gold goes downhill, rolls downhill like other things. Um, and you quote me on that. So the idea is that this guy is sitting right out here in Cow Creek Placers and has gold. So what does it look like? Well, it looks like it's kind of out in the middle of brushland, but it's hilly. And it's got some, and it's got some placer deposits that have a cow pond, but it looks like it might have had some kind of a some kind of an operation here. More likely just a cattle pond, but it's possible that in digging this, they dug up some ores um, because they're from the appearances of things, some of this might not be that far from where there are ore supplies or ore deposits, um, like these outcroppings up here. They look sedimentary by nature. Um, that may belie what they're made out of. They might be rocks and cobbles from a prior stream that flowed ancient history. You just don't know. But typically, if they're much sedimentary like there is out here, it's it's so deep and so thick you couldn't get to the gold. So something else had to happen. And in this case, my suspicion is this looks a bit like it might be a fault line. Notice that's kind of cutting across here. And this is uplifted and there's exposed uh, sedimentary layers. And over here, there's none. So that tends to look like something suspicious happened there. And then here's kind of where it all rolled to. But it, it's a little hard to tell. And it's a such a rarity to see it. Not like over here uh, near Zortman, where, where we've got pocks of this stuff all over the place. And uh, we have uh, Sullivan Creek with gold. Placer unknown. Unknown unknown. Gold and silver. 
Uh, here we got alkaline gold tellurium. There we go. Now we're getting into rare earths. Uh, gold, silver, and tellurium veins. So now we're talking uh, um, some kind of a uh, of a load mine, and that's the nature of that beast. But it looks like uh, perhaps he even has been worked. Notice the outcroppings have been have been uh, trimmed off with a bandsaw. No, actually they've been trimmed off with a big dozer and uh, probably some loaders and heavy equipment. But it looks like they had a whole you know open surface mining thing going on here it looks like they may have done some surface mining recovery over in here like they buried some stuff because too flat um and this looks like it might be some leach pits or leach heap stuff for cyanide leaching uh, a little hard to tell what's going on here but this definitely has all the feel of of a real live open surface mine with with heap leach processing, uh, that's not unusual to see in this kind of area, and it means that this is probably a pretty rich area. Um, but that also means some of these areas that are offshoots of this might be interesting if they're available either for claim or for access through somebody else's claim and an agreement, like a club, uh, that they might have some serious gold out in the middle of Montana. So that's it for the middle of Montana. As you can see, there just isn't much of it out toward the east it just kind of disappears i'm going to move this over a little bit and zoom in a smidge and so pretty much everything out here is just uh really sparse now let's go over the rocky mountains let's just dive in there for a second and see what we have now notice not all the rockies are created equal either and that's not unusual for some of these because of how the buckling occurs, you might be taking sedimentary rocks that are really deep, buckling them way up, exposing stuff maybe on the west side through some other method or, or on the west side because it's on the tip of this thing and everything else is just buckled up so it's still sediments miles deep and it's just bent around. In which case, typically you'd find in these regions like out in these flat plains, you'd find that might, might be very interesting from a standpoint of drilling oil, but not so much gold. Um, and that's because these anticlines and synclines that go along with these regions are interesting oil traps, but they cap off a large amount of overburden for you to deal with if it's gold, unless they buckle, you know, they actually break free and start, start overriding the other parts of the plate. Uh, so let's take a look at some of these. This one is Lion Gulch and it says gold and gold, Lincoln Gulch, pardon the eyeballs. Uh, so Lincoln Gulch is in the middle of these, you know, vertical things. This is very much like what we saw in the Appalachians and what we've seen over in the Horst and Graben area, except a slight difference. These are not so much up faulted and down faulted regions as they are buckled and eroded sections of sediment. So when a sediment forms, oh, I left it downstairs. Um, so when you get sediments or this is metamorphic but it was sediments you start seeing these lines that run across this way through through the sediments and those lines once it buckles open form different levels of erosion those different levels of erosion show up as these stripes based on the thickness of the layer and what material you know deposited in past history when it buckles up some of the sedimentary sandstones or metamorphic, metamorphic material will erode faster than others and you get these, these stripes that are linear. Now, in this case, what I'm seeing here is a, a lot of that kind of behavior. I would be, uh, I'd have to dig into the actual geology of the region in terms of rocks and minerals that are recovering to, to be able to you know, kind of do a further assessment of what's going on here and why there's no gold, but that's my guess. Um, and it goes with the oil on the eastern side of this. So, you know, at some point that oil stops and true Rocky Mountains start. And so this is more of a hill region, foothills for the Rockies. Um, Lion Gul Lincoln Gulch we talked about. Now let's kind of keep traversing sideways. So now we're working our way westward into more rugged terrain and more lakes and valleys and that kind of stuff now we're starting to look at some pretty serious you know more mountainous country deeper lakes and that kind of good stuff there's flathead lake 
And so up above it, when we start getting into more of this mountainous terrain, now we start seeing the jumbo mine with chalcopyrite, remember we took sulfides, galena, malachite, so copper, gold, lead, sulfides. Mixed together, you get things like malachite, which is also downstairs. I'm gonna bring, I'll bring it up tomorrow night. Um, but you know these, these brilliant blue and green ores that are loaded with copper can carry silver and gold with them as well. And so you just need to know that as part of the, part of the jumbo mines output, that's what they were producing, that kind of material. Uh, copper, gold, silver from unknown, unnamed prospects. Here's a whole bunch of prospects over in this area. Golden Queen number one with gold and silver. Let's check again, check our dates just for fun. When was the Golden Queen silver logged? It was logged back in 1957. So not that far back is when this reference uh, came about. So somewhere prior to 1957 is when this mine was developed. That's why I always go check those just to kind of get a picture of when this region, you know, how old is it? it you'd have to check every single one because there's oftentimes a mine or two but it's not uncommon when you see a cluster like this that one mine begat the others within years, you know, and so uh, it's not unusual for people to have a little tiny gold rush in an area like that just because word got out. And you'll see that happen all through this area. And so now we're working on over toward the border and notice we've gotten into real mountain country here. And all of a sudden we're talking a different kind of geology entirely, typically more metamorphics and and some volcanics especially to the south so these guys let's see this is the mint mine unknown occurrence lead silver gold commodity number one these guys were producing uh, the lucky mine was gold silver copper so again you know it's the pattern we just keep seeing this gold silver copper lead zinc platinum these metals hang together. They're associated with each other. Now we're down in this southern area where we're starting to head into, remember we talked about that great big huge uh, pocket between Utah, between Utah, Montana, and Wyoming down here. Because right in here is our, is our good friend uh, Idaho Falls. And right up here is Yellowstone Lake. So Yellowstone National Park is right here. And what we're looking at is the stuff that's kind of around that region where that caldera is, because this is where that caldera is in this corner of, of Wyoming. And so what happens is really technically the stuff that affects it is spilling on over all the way up to Bozeman and beyond. Um, my wife grew up in Billings. So it's kind of fun. Uh, this is a really spectacular. If you get a chance to visit this area right here, all the way up, you know, all the way up to the Canadian border, do it uh, just in a flash. You know, yeah, you can go through Yellowstone. That's great. But there's just, it's like Yosemite. It's overbeaten. You go up into here, nobody. It's empty and it is gorgeous. Glacial cut canyons, superior waterfalls and, and water and rainbow and gold. Can't beat that. Oh, and, and deer and bear and wolves and, you know, all the, all the critters. They're all up there waiting for you to come by. So, uh, so let's go into that Rocky Mountain kind of stuff. Um, now that you mention it, the bear tooths and all that stuff are right up in this region. Um, so, uh, you start seeing this pattern where we have this, this large amount of, of material that's deposited at the bottom, the alluvial basin that's forming at the bottom of these mountains as they're eroding. And up on these peaks are some spectacular views with gold, gold, silver, iron, copper. Okay. And so, uh, you know, huge deal there going on. Uh, now I wanted to call your attention to some of these guys. Because now what's happening is as we go into these areas, the canyons kind of have a different, slightly different behavior in part because they have glaciers and they've had glaciers uh, and, and big ones in the past. And so these glacial cut valleys between them, these are kind of U-shaped because of how they cut and how they filled in with alluvium, but also how they cut. Um, somebody was pointing out that, you know, the cut is parabolic. Well, it's tends to be parabolic in terms of how the ice on the top deposits, 
but the base tends to cut more of a U. It's, it's probably also parabolic because of the mass on top, but that mass is kind of distributed in a funny way, so it tends to spread the load out and cut these side walls sharply. And so what ends up happening is they call it a U shape. The V shape is water cut. The U shape is is glacial cut. And when you look at them, you know that's really descriptive to what you see. How would I differentiate a parabola shaped U versus a U shaped U? I don't know. You know, come on. This is all. It's a mnemonic. It's supposed to help you figure out in the field what you're looking at. And when you see a U shaped valley, just think of the hanging valleys. That's the other feature. They will cut, cross cut. And so instead of the valleys intercepting like they do when it's river cut, where they meet at one point and that becomes a river, you know, a, a fork in the river going downstream, they will, they will actually meet with a change in elevation between them, great waterfalls, such as Yosemite Falls, Glacier Falls, etc. So what happens is you have these falls because the upper U is overhanging a bigger U on the bottom. That's the way glaciers work. They don't sink to the bottom like they do in a waterfall they actually sit and ride and put their deposit of glacial material on top of the other glacier as they, as they slide by. So they don't have a chance to cut down to the bottom where the other glacier is going. And you get these, what they call hanging U's, hanging valleys. So it's another point. So when you're looking at this uh, material, uh, keep in mind that, you know, it's, it's up here in this corner along the Rocky Mountains. The thing you're looking at is a bit of a change from metamorphic and volcanic activity to out in the eastern side where we have no gold, uh, it's becoming largely sedimentary and alluvial kind of material. And so this is your, your big plains for planting wheat and, and uh, up in the hills here, apples, that's what you know my rel relatives do up in this region. They have a nice big ranch off of here. And so it's all pretty neat uh, stuff. Uh, well worth going to visit this whole area. I would do it in a flash. And so um, now there are some funnynesses here in terms of legalities and things like that. It used to be wide open spaces and wide open people. Still is pretty much. But the thing about it is uh, it has a large influx, especially down here near Yellowstone, of well-heeled people who are very interested in conservation to their view. And it's politics. And so you just have to be aware of that, you know, that it is a rural area with a strange twist. That's just the nature of, you know, Montana and Wyoming. Uh, partly because the conservation movement has taken a shine to looking at any place that has really beautiful country and claiming it. Um, I think us gold prospectors have every right to go claim it back. Look at all this gold. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that'll fire you up into questions and answers. Huh? Let me check your questions. So, how's it going tonight? along the Missouri River. Okay, so uh, Maryland, I see. So, uh, yeah, um, the f stuff I'm familiar up in here, uh, is it Stillwater, I think it is. So, um, been a while though, been a few years or more. <laughs> I need to go out up this way more. It is one of the places I have on my bucket list to visit again and again. Um, nothing like camping out in a little tent trailer with a bunch of little kids and having grizzly bears go by. It's kind of fun uh, if you like thrill um, in the middle of the night. See Butte, Montana. Yep. Big place for lots of lots of metals, especially copper. Um, deep mines. Uh, so let's see, Charles is saying Stapleville Pass by Canyon Ferry along the Missouri River. And then uh, he says uh, Butte, Montana. Yep, Flathead Lake. We covered that a little bit. Lincoln has had earthquakes. Uh, yeah, this whole air, area is prone to earthquakes. Uh, you get into this area, especially around the caldera right in here. They're having uh, swarms of quakes in the last couple of years, and they've been building and building. And that's one of the things that put this this whole section of the caldera on alert here in the last few years is is the rate at which they're increasing is is alarming. It's much faster than they predicted, and so they're trying to figure out what's going on. They do know now uh, using seismic methods, which is another thing I probably could go into uh, another life of mine. Uh, but using seismic methods, they can see the molten 
magma moving around underneath this caldera and essentially what's happening is right in this area where the lake is it's up in this corner i think it is it's building up pressure so that's uplifting and in process it releases a bunch of microquakes and every once in a while they get a, you know 4.5 or so and, you know just pop and things rumble for a few weeks and then it settles down but the problem is like the the quakes that led up to to uh um, mount saint helens blowing its top the quakes that usually lead up to those events are fairly minor on a scale of earthquake. You know, it's, you know, five's a big one. And so what happens is it's because the magma is moving around. And magma is liquid-ish. It's kind of sticky, gooey. It depends on the concentration of, of mafic. If it's mafic and it has a lot, of, a lot of basalt kind of materials, it tends to be very sticky but very fluid. Hence, the lava that flows out on Hawaii is very mafic. And it just oozes and forms tunnels, and the tunnels rip loose underneath because it still stays molten and shoots right out in the sea, leaving the outside as a shell and tunnels inside. It's pretty fascinating stuff. Whereas you go to the, the ones that are down the Cascades or down here in the Rockies, as they get a more higher concentration of silica, that's glass, and it has a property of being very high temperature. And what happens is it moves like, uh, think of it as molten chewing gum, If it, I mean, maybe f frozen molten. It's, it's hard to describe. And the problem is it plugs up, it forms a plug. And then when that plug blows, all of the gases that are trapped in the liquids underneath boils out, just like somebody popped a bottle top. And that causes a massive explosion. Uh, if it has water table water trapped in there, it's a explosion on a scale of Terra, Terra TNT kind of thing. Uh, you know, these have the capacity to go off like an atom bomb or better. And so uh, when that happens, you don't want to be around. And typically the only thing you'll know about is the increasing rumbling in these quakes and, and their capacity. So what they've found is they can kind of pinpoint where that lava is, where that molten material is moving around, the viscosity of it, the material above it and how it's fracturing and where the stuff is finding a route to the surface uh, and then they look at what they were looking at in mount st helens was a thing called goat rocks and goat rocks split off and that opened that bottle of, of fizzy water and away it went in a big hurry so uh that's kind of it for now for that one um we've got art sherwood and marilyn welcome uh let's see where in Cherokee County, Georgia? We did Georgia earlier. I can't uh, go into it, but there'll be a link to Georgia, or as I said before, say find gold in Georgia and look for it on Facebook. And you should find Prospector Jess or Hunting for Gold channel, or if you, I mean Prospector Jess channel on YouTube or Hunting for Gold page on Facebook. Search either way for find gold in and name the state. I've tried to knit, label them all pretty much the same so that they'll fall out when you're looking for them. Uh, with a simple search um and again you can make these maps i've got the note down below uh saying the gdu down there and so that gdu offer has the information on making these maps and how i use them it also has stuff on how to you know prospect and how to look at rocks and minerals and identify them and so forth so you know avail yourself of that thing knock yourself out it's a membership and uh, it's cheap it's a buck to start for 14 days and if you like it then it's a monthly price thereafter so just just check it out and uh, if you like it keep it if you don't you can cancel it anytime no questions asked so uh and that's to help you do more than the maps if you just want to do the maps it's the ggm you know sourdoughmeyer.com slash ggm slash and that just does the map part we're doing here and shows you how to set these up and make custom maps of, of a Cherokee Creek area, for example. Um, but if you're looking to do a wider range of using this stuff in the context of prospecting the way I teach it, it's the GDU. So catch you there. Um, are there nuggets in Montana? Uh, sure, there are nuggets in Montana. Now, a lot of these areas, it depends on where you are relative to this kind of material I'm talking about. If it's if it's primary load material that is broken out, one you can find load material and and crush it to bring out. If it's micro gold, if it's not micro gold, then you can you can find that stuff and basically process out by acid leaching and pull out the crystalline gold. 
that crystalline gold, if it's in that rock and material, when it's eroded by other than glacial activity, if it's eroded by water, will tend to form nuggets or at least coarse gold. Now, I'd have to ask somebody who's here, who's done a lot of prospecting in Montana, what size they typically find in Montana. If somebody can chime in with that, I'd appreciate that, putting that on the page here in the comments, because I have not done that much prospecting in this region. Um, I, it's on my list, but it's not, you know, I prospected for uh, trout <laughs> uh, when I was here. Uh, actually, the funny part, this was actually during the time period where I was into geology. So I was in Montana, but I was looking rocks <laughs> and faults. And, and I was looking at the mines, but not for the gold. I was looking more for the kinds of ores and the kinds of minerals that went into and the kind of faulting that was going on here, as well as that caldera called, called Yellowstone Lake. And just kind of get my head wrapped around. There's also an area down southwest of there called Earthquake Lake. Uh, where there was a major earthquake and, and uh, landslide. And so all of that was of interest to me. We're uh, kind of like the goat rocks on Mount St. Helens, only it was a little different material. This was limestone sheared off and a whole mountainside covered up a campsite and, you know, buried a bunch of people. It was sad, but, uh, you know, stuff like that always, for some reason, fascinated me. The dynamics of the earth, even though it doesn't move very fast, when it does move, it moves very, very powerfully. So you just got to be ready. So, uh, so that's my answer to, are there nuggets in Montana? It's a really strange roundabout way. So if somebody could answer that question specifically, I'd appreciate it. Um, see, hey everyone from Ontario, Canada. So we got, uh, you know, Stuart comes back over and over again and I'm gonna do something for Ontario, but it's coming up. I just haven't gotten there yet, but uh, you know, Ontario and British Columbia are two areas that fascinate me for their differences in gold. And, and and what can be had from either one of them in the way of things like diamonds, um, as well as gold. So it's a fascinating story in its own right. Uh, let's see. Marysville, Montana says Mike. Uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, And Tony Jamarillo is looking for gold in New Mexico. Can't find placer gold, but then again, I probably do half my detecting and painting in the wrong. And you're not alone. So that's part of why we're doing what we're doing is trying to get you to focus on what you should focus on and where to go pan versus where to go detect. They can be slightly different uh, for different reasons and, and stuff like that, but also where to kind of not go because it's really painful when you out and you're, you're you know looking and looking and looking and nothing comes up because it's not much fun, uh, except it's outdoors. Come on, that's great. So uh, let's see, wow, we got a lot of comments tonight. I'm having trouble following all you guys here. This is good. This is great. <laughs> Keep it up. So uh, let's see. Uh, Big Fork, Montana here says Kid Huck, south of Glacier. Beautiful country. Uh, beautiful country. Let's see if we can find Big Fork for him. Up here. There's Anaconda. Missoula. Great Falls. My wife lived out here. Now, they weren't going for gold. They were going for black gold. Uh, he was working with Schlumberger. Uh, Going for oil up there. That's my father-in-law. World War II veteran. Still alive. Uh, you can pray for him. All those guys, aren't very many left. And they were amazing people. He, you know, he's amazing. Amazing man. Uh, so there's West Glacier. And here's all those glacial, you know, canyons and peaks up that way. Now, again, Glacier doesn't show indication of much in the way of gold, except there's one right there, unnamed copper and gold. Flathead Lake, again, we're talking about that. Big Fork. East Glacier, 
My sister worked up in Glacier for a couple of summers. And then St. Mary and St. Mary's Lake and all that stuff. And then, and then on into Canada, where the Canadians are. <laughs> oh, don't take it wrong. I'm not making fun of you guys. Hey. Okay. Been working for some Canadians on this project behind me, so it's kind of fun. They're almost the same time zone. So I think that's uh, you know probably it for tonight. Um, are there any questions anybody has left? I'm kind of running out of. I'm sure there's more. Uh, I mean, there's so much stuff in Montana. It's a spectacular country. Let me zoom back out. Swing it over here. Straighten up my polarities. And maybe zoom back out just a tad. And that's Montana for tonight. So, uh, next door to North and South Dakota. We've got that whole Great Plains thing to cover, uh, kind of special edition material, and then even more special is that glacial cut area around the Great Lakes. We'll be getting to that later. Uh, for now, I think I'd like you to kind of stay focused on what we're doing here in the West Coast. Um, I want to finish with Wyoming, and then we'll kind of spin around, probably shoot up to Alaska just for completion. But I might, I might go over on the East Coast. There's just several places. Tell me whether you want East Coast or West Coast. Let's just divide this thing up and have some fun. So tell me in the comments, East Coast or West Coast, and we'll take a vote. Well, this is a democratic society. <clears throat> Actually, it's a Republican. I'm king. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let me know what you think, because uh, we can go either way. I kind of have been bouncing back and forth, in part because I had some points to prove about the contrast between East and West Coast geography and geology. But I also think there's uh, merit to kind of let you guys steer me where you want to go. That's why I let the guys beat me up on Utah the other day, and they got it. So, uh, Charles says, great talk tonight. So on that token, let me know below, though. I'll be watching the comments after the show, so let me know what you think about East Coast, West Coast. I've got, you know, I still got to do uh, West Virginia. We've got some venturing to do up in New Hampshire and, and Maine and and uh, that whole section of the country, as well as that whole Midwest district of Illinois, Missouri, and uh, Ohio and so forth, Indiana. So kind of cut into that area and talk about what the Great Lakes did. And we'll talk, actually, glaciers did. Um, but we'll get into that. Prospector Jess, over and out for tonight. Thanks, and good prospecting. I'll see you tomorrow.